Good morning, and welcome to another Doble Learning Lab with Yamaha Nexo. I'm Brian Henderson, National Accounts Manager with Doble Labs. A little bit about Doble. Um, we are award-winning, nationally recognized audio-visual and security systems company. Um, we provide these solutions uh, to all of our customers from corporate um, and university, K through 12, hospitality, all those different different divisions of, of business. Our reputation is cultivated and it's been from 1971, so we are celebrating 50 years this year, which is fantastic. And we have over 150 employees across the country, uh, many different disciplines, um, programmers, designers, installs, installation technicians, uh, as well as event and uh, security, uh, different uh, people. And next, a couple different divisions of the company. Uh, if you're unaware, we have an audio full uh, version of audio visual integrated systems provider, uh, an event production, and you can see all those. The security, fire, and, and uh, surveillance division, and all of these different divisions are completely independent of each another. So we have uh, complete services there. The digital signage that we provide, uh, whether it's in corporate boardrooms or hallways uh, or in wide open areas, uh, we, can, we can take care of all those solutions for you. And of course, public address and low voltage, as you can see, K through 12 and mass notification areas. A lot of what I provide and how I help with Doble is through the event production division. We support um, many venues, whether they're hotels, conference centers, convention centers across the country. And as you can see on this diagram here, we can provide you with solutions for audiovisual lighting, cameras, uh, all that support, whether you're holding a, a meeting for 15 or conferences from 500 or 5,000 person event. So and those are one stop shop, we can do it in the hotels or from our offices here in, in Pittsburgh. And uh, one of the other things on our on our event production side, as you can see after 2012, things have changed and um, we have a little some diagrams that we've set up to show not to cancel those events, how you can carefully and skillfully uh, socially distance and we can help you with those if you're providing these events. Uh, so you can still have your event and we can still do that hybrid type meeting where you can broadcast it across the internet to your company or across the country to people that would want to call in similar to what we're doing today. And again, that being said, I'm going to hand it over to our friends and, and partners with uh, Yamaha Nexo and introduce Wes Hirschberger and Doug Staub. And at this point, let the gentleman take it away. And I'm going to stop sharing and let Wes go. Thanks, Brian. All right. Absolutely. Thanks, Brian. Uh, getting my screen shared up here for you guys. Well, hey, everybody. My name is Wes Hirschberger. Uh, I'm part of Yamaha and Nexo uh, in the United States and joined by uh, Mr. Doug Staub, who is uh, one of our East or is our Eastern Regional uh, Manager for Yamaha and Nexo. So uh, we're super grateful to be uh, invited here today to to do a little presentation with you guys. Um, we felt, you know, our partnership with Doble really exemplifies uh, what it means to look at system solutions and how to scale them. Uh, with all of Doble's offerings uh, from event production all the way up to full on installations uh, across multiple applications in different venue sizes and styles. Um, Yamaha really prides ourselves on, um, honestly, the vast amount of products um, that we're able to offer at the utmost quality and reliability and feature set uh, in, in the industry. Um, so a little bit about Yamaha, if, if you're kind of new to the name, which which maybe that uh, there's a couple joining us today that are, but it goes without saying that Yamaha is a world leader, first and foremost, in musical instruments. That's really where our heritage comes from. It's in making music and enjoying music. It's part of everything we do. Um, fun fact, approximately one out of every four musical instruments sold today is a Yamaha product. Um, globally. Globally, exactly. Yeah. And so Yamaha in the world of audio really exists to take the beauty and art created with musical instruments and translating it to an audience, whether that's in a recorded fashion, in a live audio fashion, um, whether it's playing live music or playing back recorded music. 
um, to various audiences uh, in different places around the world. Um, so all the different applications that we that we play in on the pro audio side, you know, live sound obviously is huge for us. And um, Doug and I are, are part of the Yamaha division that represent uh, everything pro audio, uh, including our Nexo brand, which we're going to talk a little bit about today. Um, we service broadcast teams, uh, broadcast integrators uh, working on on trucks and studios, uh, musicians and portable sounds to halls and theaters, uh, commercially installed spaces, and I hinted a little bit already on the post-production side of music. Um, so if you're familiar with the Yamaha name in the pro audio world at all, you know that it's synonymous with being a global leader in digital consoles. Um, Yamaha has been making uh, digital consoles now for over 33 years um, with an absolutely vast lineup uh, going back to uh, some of the very first digital consoles uh, in the industry. And so, like I said, uh, Doug and I are just pleased to be joining you guys today. Um, and, and we're really excited to, to not only be able to, uh, to talk more about our partnership with Doble and how um, we've, we've uh, been on this great trajectory of designing uh, awesome systems with them, but then also to, you know, maybe you'll uh, be able to uh, see some products and uh, applications today that might apply uh, to your specific situation as well. So um, would love to see questions and participation uh, in the chat. Uh, if you have anything, we'll probably save most of those to the end unless we see one that's specific to the application we're talking about. Um, but what we're going to transition to now um, is uh, talking a little bit about uh, Yamaha's approach to design and then look at a couple different uh, systems uh, applications and how they scale together. So we'll, we're going to be looking at a couple different applications uh, or examples today. So. Um, one thing I want to hit first, so uh, Yamaha's approach to supporting not only our channel partners, but also our end users comes in the form of a team full of professionals uh, on our sales staff, as well as uh, the amazing um, systems engineers and applications engineers that are behind us to provide support uh, all the way to our technical support that's available um, to any end users and any channel partners um, that need support on a Yamaha product. Um, but on the sales and design side of things, so Doug, being our Eastern Regional Manager, oversees a team of sales staff uh, of district managers, um, and we we service the entire uh, United States as part of Yamaha Corporation of America. And then myself, I am on a team called the Field Sales Engineering Team, which focuses a little more in depth on the technical pre-sales approach of things, uh, with working on system design, um, whether that's in-depth speaker modeling, product selection. Um, just technical training and questions, being able to funnel some of that through to our technical marketing group if necessary. Um, and so that's why today uh, I get the awesome privilege of being invited to talk about designing some scalable systems with you guys. So as we start to dive into that, we're going to look at, you know, what exactly is in a system. And you'll see a list of products here. We're not going to cover every single one of these today, but um, really a system to us when we're approaching the design is going to include at least a couple of these different product segments, a mixer, an interface, a processor, a network switch, an amplifier with loudspeakers, maybe powered loudspeakers, control uh, surfaces um, that may include, you know, customized iPad interface and whatnot. Um, so not every single system is going to have every single one of these pieces. And that's the beauty of designing a system is you get to customize it to what is needed. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. Um, so just a little more uh, about our approach to designing with systems in mind. You'll see a couple of questions come on the screen. And really, these are questions that, you know, I kind of want to just start with with uh, with us to consider before we start just throwing gear on a page at you guys this morning. Because um, really, as system designers, whether it's in an installation or a portable application, we want to be asking the right questions. Uh, and Doble uh, has done an extremely good job of this just in the time we've been working together, uh, which is why we, we love getting to work with Doble Laboratories, because they really care about what their end users are looking for in a system and ask these questions up front. And so, um, you know, what kind of application are we considering for? Uh, who's going to be using this system? Um, what's it primarily going to be used for? Are there any secondary needs of the system? Um, you know, is there a determined budget in line? Because we all know that at the end of the day is going to be a big factor in what's designed and chosen. And so, you know, as we start to look at designing, whether for a portable or an installation application, um, you know, we're going to be gathering some materials. And this may just be information based on 
hey, this venue is uh, is is a 40 by 40 box. Um, there's going to be a 20, 20 by LD, LED wall. Uh, and so we need to design around that all the way to, hey, here's a performing arts center and we have detailed CAD images. Uh, and we need to take into account, you know, the different acoustic properties of this environment as well. Um, you know, hey, maybe this is a new building. We need to consider uh, construction involvement and what coordination needs to take place. You know, do we need to be really critical about um, the types of amplifiers we're putting in based on power draw? All those sorts of things come into play here. And so the way uh, Yamaha and Nexo get involved in that is utilizing some tools we have in-house. Uh, not only uh, people like myself on the field sales engineering team and our entire regional sales team, um, but also these, these software tools that we have available to us. So you see here the Nexo NS1 software, which uh, is a, what we use for calculating SPL across the entire uh, Nexo line, soon to be the entire Yamaha line in a uh, release coming later this fall. Little teaser there for you guys. Um, but currently uh, for the Yamaha speaker applications, we're using the YS Cube software um, and then also our Cisco platform, uh, which is going to be used for generating um, speaker quantities across like distributed 70 volt systems. Um, and then just a couple other tools we use just in terms of, you know, uh, for formatting gear, you know, our MTX MRX editor, that's going to be our, our main DSP editing platform. So again, all these tools just that are, at our disposal to to start figuring out which pieces of the puzzle we want to pull together per application. So hey, I'm, just, I'm sorry, I want to add in, at, they're at the disposal, uh, they're free downloads too. So both end users, dealers, customers, everybody, you know, sound, yeah. sound engineers, et cetera, can all download a complete working copy of this, even to work on a project in advance of making the purchase, you know, or having the installation yeah. team come in from Dobo or whoever. And, and, and yeah. work on that. So it's a tool, certainly that a, a user can also get training on. It. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, system designers and programmers and, and users alike, if you're just curious about what tactically a piece of gear is going to feel like when you're programming it or operating it, um, Yamaha, even, you know, you see the MTX MRX editor here, but we have console editors that are really good at giving you a representation of, of what's available or what you're going to be working with. Um, so Doug's absolutely right. All that's available on our website, um, actually on a software slash downloads tab uh, within the pro audio section of our website. So diving into the first system here, um, we're just going to be taking a look at a couple of different examples. Uh, system number one, we're going to kind of start small and work ourselves uh, up to a larger system today. Um, so application number one is going to be a small restaurant and cafe. And you can see some nice uh, decorative surface speakers there. Uh, that's actually some, some white Yamaha VXS uh, fives. And so taking a look at a space like this that might have a requirement just for some soft background music, uh, potentially a, a paging system as necessary, you know, how, how do we look at designing that? How do we, you know, take something simple, but make it great, right? Um, and so the application, you know, here is going to look at using uh, Yamaha's built-in mixer amplifier uh, with a couple of VXS5 loudspeakers and a digital wall controller that can actually... Um, control a couple of different functions on that mixer amplifier. And so, again, this type of application may just be used for some music inputs. So you can see some stereo inputs on the back of this guy. Uh, it can be ran in one zone or two zones. And then you can actually bring microphones into it too and use the priority ducking, feedback suppression, uh, and leveling built inside of this uh, unit uh, to be able to create, honestly, a really powerful system without having to go full on uh, digital mixer. Um, and it's got the amplifier built right in, as we saw. Actually, you don't even need a PC for this. This can completely be configured and set up with the dip switches in the back. So you can go into the field, take it out of the box, and have a working system with some with a little bit of built-in DSP, as you mentioned, priority ducker override. Exactly. A couple of of EQ with with a, a miniature, you know, jeweler screwdriver. So. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, one step further, if you wanted to hide that unit in a rack or something. You could install one of these digital control panels uh, on the wall and plug it directly into the unit. And you could see here, there's a couple different ways you can configure it for control, uh, whether that's bringing in microphones uh, for paging or just overlay announcements. Um, or maybe you just want to be able to control the different source selection, you know, right from this, this controller, uh, which makes it super easy for staff uh, and whoever's got to operate this system. A little bit about the speakers in this system. Um, 
this is part of Yamaha's commercial installation line, which we're not going to cover uh, in full detail today because we we'd be here for you know six or seven hours, and so I know we all have things to do. So, um, but I did want to highlight, you know, the VXS speakers that we just had had chosen as an example in this application. Um, these are our surface mount speakers. They're actually IP35 rated, which means they can be utilized in both an indoor and outdoor uh, situation. They are two-way bass reflex design and sound really incredible for the types of speakers that they are. Um, they do have a nominal impedance of eight ohms, but they also can be tapped at 70 volt and 100 volt settings. And you see those taps listed there. Um, one of the amazing things about Yamaha's uh, CIS line is that all the speakers are paintable. Uh, without voiding the warranty. So, uh, you know, looking back at that at that picture, you could have painted it to match the wall if you wanted to. Uh, you can keep them white or keep them black. You know, it's really up to you. And so um, that's a great uh, feature to have when looking at, you know, installing systems, especially in a in a more discreet environment. I'll add uh, as well, specific to the ceiling speakers, um, one of the things that just a simple little thing, but unless you've been a contractor out there in the field doing it, um, the ceiling uh, speaker covers themselves have a lot of extra spare space so that if somebody does a not so perfect job of making the cutout, which we've all seen happen before, and you need a little bit of slop room, our speaker edges are, are extra little bit longer just to cover up a sloppy cut hole. That may seem trivial, but it, for those that have been in the field doing it, it's kind of an important thing. So again, if you're taking it off the paint and putting it back up and, and or, or putting it in after the fact, uh, it's just a little extra thing that Yamaha put into the design as, as long as, as well as things like handles, you know, if you're going up on a giant lift or, or carrying a couple of them at a time, we were the first manufacturer to put handles on a ceiling speaker. So when, the, when you're out there in the field, putting them up there, you can do it safer and more and, and quicker. So. Yeah, Brian, to answer uh, your question in the chat, I don't think, uh, the speakers themselves are magnetic, but like Doug just said, the uh, getting around that. Yeah. Yep. Um, it's an eighth turn. Uh, yeah. They pop up and do an eighth an eighth turn. They lock in real easily. So. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, Doug. Um, so yeah, that was a, a look at a first system. We're going to jump right into the second one, unless there's any questions about you know a simple mixer amplifier with a couple of speakers. Um, so system number two kind of moving up in our scale and you're going to see some products start to get reused as we go on here because again the whole idea here is being able to scale systems using an entire product line and not having to you know uh, be too focused so um, we're going to look at a corporate conference room example um, and in this corporate conference room setting you know we'd be looking at using one of yamaha's dsps um, with one of our pre-optimized for dante network switches uh, two uh, column line arrays that are actually PoE powered um, over that network switch and receive Dante audio. So it's just one Cat5 cable uh, per speaker. And then Wait, the actual interface. Did you, did you say we make Yamaha makes network switches? Did I just hear you say that? You did. We're going to blow people's minds. We're going to blow people's People mind. You know, know, Yamaha, I don't know if we've got anyone uh, from Asia on this, com on this conversation, but you might know uh, Yamaha is actually known as the Cisco. Uh, of Asia. And so just a couple of years ago, we were able to bring this networking technology uh, to the United States specifically in looking at optimizing switches for Dante use. So you're going to see a really common uh, theme here as we step through some of these systems. So um, moving on uh, in this example, you know, you kind of see a rough layout of, of where some of this equipment's going to be going, you know, rack in the corner, um, the ability to wirely interface with this system because we're going to be talking about a couple different control options. And then Yamaha, believe it or not, too, we're not going to focus on any of these products today, but makes a full line of consumer uh, AV equipment, such as the Blu-ray disc player and some of the highest end uh, AV receivers on the market. Uh, whether you'd be using it for a system like this to bring in some video audio um, to be played in a conferencing solution, or if you really want to build up your home theater um, we can help you with that too. Um, but in this conference room application, you know, a lot of this is going to center around our DSP. So, uh, Yamaha has a couple different DSP offerings. Um, and the technology in these DSPs is really starting to take off. There's been many firmware releases, even since I just joined the company, uh, over the last year. And so, um, some of the, uh, different features you're going to see built inside of our MRX 7D, which is our, uh, highest end, um, open architecture DSP 
uh, are all some of the usual subjects you're going to notice, like acoustic echo, echo cancellation for bringing in conferencing phones, uh, ambient noise compensation, right, for raising microphone levels on some of those. Um, but really where you start to get, you know, meat on the bone here is looking at some of the advanced features like the Dugan Auto Mixer. Um, so I don't know how many people on this call might be familiar with the name Dan Dugan, but he's an invented a pretty amazing technology that's been in partnership with Yamaha uh, for several years now where essentially it's an auto mixer that does not rely on the use of auto gating, but actually uses uh, a way to read the voltage coming in on each microphone line to auto mix it appropriately. And you can set different thresholds and different, um, different uh, priority settings to really create an, an extremely comprehensive, uh, well-managed uh, conferencing environment where you've got seven, eight, 12, 24 open microphones even, um, and you'll see a little bit later on too, that same technology is available uh, in many of our mixing consoles uh, as well. So when looking at live events, um, the Dugan Auto Mixing technology is a must have for many, many corporate events, uh, as well as even some concerts uh, and, and theater productions. Um, and then also inside of the DSP uh, is actually a proprietary speech privacy system. Um, that Yamaha has spent a lot of time working on. And speech privacy, if you're not familiar with it, is used a lot um, in, in corporate environments. Uh, maybe a conference room needs to hold some sensitive information and we wanna make sure you know, cubicles outside aren't uh, getting fed the same information or uh, in, any, uh, in any sort of uh, environment where HIPAA compliance is necessary to protect, to, uh, to protect the privacy of the information uh, that's being talked about. And so, one of the unique things about the way Yamaha approaches that is actually instead of just pumping white noise in a secondary system, uh, you actually take uh, the information that's being, um, you know, said into the system and it actually intentionally garbage uh, and, and tries and makes it completely, you know, un uh, jumbled. Yeah, just full, yeah, fully jumbled. It's, gar uh, it's garbled consonants. And then you can blend that in with an additional environmental noise. So. You can you yeah. could blend it in with a nature sound, with traffic, with other office sounds, with running water, and you actually find the perfect match. And the net effect is you can have noise masking at about a 10 dB less output than our competitors. So we have a proprietary circuit that's included in the cost of the MRX. So pretty cool little technology. It's not for everybody, but it's something that, uh, again, gets used in a HIPAA uh, environment or government offices and things like that. Again, very sensitive data. So... Yeah, sure. there. And so in any good um, environment where there's a lot of different uh, things going on, a lot of processing, right, that we just saw inside of the DSP, we want to be really consensitive to what kind of control uh, are we using. So Yamaha offers many different control options uh, that can be used in this conference room example, or you saw even these same uh, DCP controllers available for that uh, mixer amplifier before. And then we're really going to jump into taking a look at some of our advanced options, such as this LCD programmable wall controller, as well as Yamaha's ProVision Air touch and control software. Um, so just a brief look at the hardware options. You know, you've got uh, an IP-based MCP1 uh, and then RS-485 control-based DCPs. Um, and then we do have uh, some, pro uh, some paging uh, microphone and stations available too. So again, in the nature of building out full systems, there's a ton of different options. Um, but every good system, you know, hopefully has a facet tied into some sort of wireless network. And so uh, one step further, we've got wireless DCPs, which is actually uh, just an app that can be downloaded on Android or iOS uh, and can be programmed, uh, you know, on a zone per zone basis. So someone coming in, getting on a specific Wi-Fi network can have control at their fingertips. And then one step further, uh, Yamaha's ProVision Air Touch platform, which I want to highlight, this is one of the most unknown pieces of Yamaha, uh, I think, that's out there. And this doesn't just apply to conference rooms. The ProVision Air Touch, as you see, uh, is a computer or a tablet-based uh, software that can be programmed for just about every networkable piece of Yamaha equipment in our line. Um, from network loudspeakers to consoles, DSPs that we already saw. Um, you could create interfaces for it and control it directly. So 
in the world where we're used to bringing everything into the, into the DSP, building the control that way, and then controlling all the devices from the DSP, Yamaha actually makes it so that you can just attach an interface directly to a single piece of gear and control it directly. It doesn't all have to be fed through the DSP, even though it can be. Yeah. So again, flexibility when designing these systems. And so the ProVision Air Touch, we'll take a look at, at some of the examples here. You know, I'll be honest, I just learned how to program Yamaha ProVision Air in this last year uh, and found it extremely intuitive and easy. Um, so there's a couple different uh, ways, as I mentioned, to, to look at using the ProVision Air platform, you know, whether it's through an iPad with ProVision Air Touch or a Windows PC through ProVision Air Control. Um, you can also offer to your clients a specific ProVision Air kiosk software, which allows user level access control. Uh, so you can kind of lock things down uh, if that's something that you're into. Uh, it can be completely customizable with drag and drop functionality, and it can be fully white labeled. So in terms of uh, offering turnkey solutions, whether in a conference room or any other system, uh, this is an excellent route to take. So just a couple of visual examples of what some of these ProVision Air uh, interfaces can look like. You can see here a couple of these talk directly to DSPs. A couple of them are extremely layered and, and complex. Um, some might just be a single fader for a single zone. Um, you might could even use the wireless DCP software for that. So the setting up of ProVision Air, extremely easy. You design it inside of the controller, uh, check it all out, and then make sure once you're on the wireless network, operation from there. Um, and where ProVision Air really starts to take off when you're using it in a DSP-based system is uh, actually with the in introduction uh, in the last year of non-Yamaha device control. So Yamaha DSPs are now uh, branching into the world of this, what we call external events. Um, so being able to use something like ProVision Air Touch or a digital control panel on a wall to send a trigger through the DSP and actually control external devices such as a projector or a screen or a TV. Um, so I won't spend a ton of time on that because I know we could, we could if we really wanted to, um, but just know ProVision Air uh, software is completely free uh, to download, which is uh, incredible. So if you've got a tablet of any kind or a smartphone or a computer uh, and you've got some Yamaha products, start having fun with that. Um, also our systems uh, applications engineers have uh, some pretty awesome examples if anybody ever wants to see uh, more of what this technology can do. So we're focusing back on the conference room system itself. I wanted to, to hint on these loudspeakers that are actually in this system. So Yamaha, uh, Doug, I don't know the exact age of the VXL line, um, but this is our column line array. So it's actually uh, a series of one and a half inch drivers uh, in an eight driver, 16 driver or 24 driver package it can be stacked on each other. Uh, and as you'll see, they just look really sleek, especially in these conference room type environments uh, or even small entertainment rooms as well. I mean, this could be a larger uh, sort of cinematic display and maybe you want to put the speakers right next to it for imaging purposes. Uh, they fit incredibly well on here. Yeah, we, we launched them about two years ago and um, the line continues to grow. So again, this is part of our CX yeah. 70 volt series of our products. So. Yeah. So. Um, one of the examples we're looking at in this application, so in the 16 driver version, we actually have a PoE version. Uh, so it takes Dante audio directly in, grabs power from that same ethernet connection, and you literally just have a single Cat5 into your speaker and you're up and running, no external power needed. You can mount these directly on the wall. Um, and so you'll see here, uh, actually using um, our VXL configuration tool, you can start to see uh, great prediction in SPL you can see the coverage pattern to figure out how high you want it. And then you can actually change uh, narrow and wide modes to dial in your coverage. So uh, in these applications that we've talked about, this is an extremely powerful Swiss Army knife of a speaker. Uh, and like Doug said, that VXL line is, is pretty uh, expansive already and continues to grow. And then the backbone of the, of the system, which we already handed on already with the network switch, but uh, one example we'll take a look at here is a power over ethernet version of an intelligent L2 switch. Um, so Yamaha has integrated its own expertise in networking uh, and professional audio fields to make this switch fully optimized for Dante, Dante audio networks. So if anybody on this call uh, has ever had to deal with uh, network switch QoS or IGMP snooping settings, uh, guess what? You don't have to worry about that inside of these Yamaha switches because it's already optimized for you. 
Um, so incredible workflow. This is one switch of, of many. We actually have a pretty expansive line of Yamaha switches. So encourage you guys to check that out. So that's our conference room system. As you can see, we, we, we uh, you know, utilize some of the same control we saw, you know, in the, in the small restaurant system, even the same kind of speakers, um, whether it's the column line array, or maybe we want to just go with a single eight inch surface speaker uh, that can all be integrated together. And so now we're going to take some of those pieces uh, and move into a multi-zone system, such as a modern brewery installation. So you see those same VXS speakers uh, mounted here. In this specific application, we're going to be looking at uh, a brewery that actually composes of nine zones of audio, uh, both indoor and outdoor. Uh, this is a recent design uh, I got the pleasure of working on, and uh, we actually were able to look at utilizing both Yamaha and Nexo solutions. Um, so Nexo is uh, Yamaha's premium uh, speaker brand. Uh, Yamaha and Nexo uh, formed their exclusive partnership back in 2008. And Nexo has been making quality uh, boutique loudspeakers uh, based out of Playa France for the last uh, 40 years now. And so incredible technologies uh, and patents. We're going to take a look, a look at those patents and technologies later. Um, but really, when we want to step up that premium audio level, Nexo is that place to do so. Um, and at an incredible budget uh, point too, um, which I, th I think Dobo can attest to, to, the, to both the quality uh, and value that's provided in the Nexo line. So in this application, you'll see just a couple of screenshots of, of what we're dealing with from, from a model standpoint, but moving into the, the entire system schematic, you'll start to see, okay, we're starting to get a bit more complex. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty outstanding system, you know, based on obviously our backbone here with a couple of network switches, a DSP, uh, a small little rack mixer, a remote IO unit, and then we're going to utilize provision air touch uh, to be able to feed audio across this entire uh, complex, you know, um, to a powerful left right stereo system with subs, uh, you know, in, in an atrium bar setting um, to, you know, a background music that's full range here uh, to a banquet hall that gets used for some live events. Um, and then a couple of outdoor uh, situations, some in-ceiling speakers, um, and then, you know, an outdoor patio even, because we'll talk about the, the different IP uh, protection levels that some of these Nexus speakers offer. So real quick, um, a different uh, DSP used in this system from the MRX that we used in the conference room. This is one of our fixed architecture DSPs. And what that essentially means is um, many of the channel strips are already pre-built into this DSP. And so it essentially functions like a like a compact digital mixer. Um, so being able to have, you know, all of these uh, channels with processing available to you, and then you route them, you know, to the different zones you need, um, it, it basically takes everything good about a digital mixer, uh, but then brings it in this small form factor that you can then, um, you know, have live in a rack and feed your amplifiers uh, in the full system. I want to throw a factoid out real quick, Wes, for those that don't have a whole lot of history with our DSP or, or our, you know, 35 years of doing digital consoles. But to add to what you say, a lot of folks get a little scared when you say fixed architecture because they're going to think that they're limited in what they can do. And actually, because we, you know, we make our own DSP chips for our digital consoles and our DSPs. We, we have the, since day one in 1987 on digital mixers, okay? So those DSP chips are are basically designed for high fidelity, low latency. They're built specifically for audio consoles. Now we do use third party DSP as well in the products, but what the advantage of that is, is we can do a heck of a lot of audio processing out in, in these rack mount mixers. So we even want to give you a fixed architecture, like Wes said, we're still giving you a whole bunch of features in there. It's just, as right. Wes alluded to, we're kind of doing some cost savings there. So um, um, it's very, very powerful, both the MTX5 and the three. Yeah, I think, Doug, you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people just assume when you say fixed architecture, it's like, cool, I get an EQ and a compressor. Uh, you know, well, how do, yeah. how, do I get, uh, how do I get all the other stuff I need? And as you saw on that chart, there's all of those things available at your fingertips. Um, so also in the system, um, we're actually starting to bring a full mixer in now, not just relying on the DSP to provide all the mixing, but this uh, TF rack mixer in this application specifically was utilized uh, in the banquet hall where uh, live events are held, um, both on a portable basis uh, for different conferences, but also some, some live uh, music as well. And so a 16 channel mixer um, that you see here with, with inputs and outputs directly on board and a touch screen on the front. 
Um, but the real beautiful part of this mixer, you know, besides its incredible features, like we saw with uh, the, the massive channel count, um, the TF rack and the TF consoles that, that we'll talk about here in a little bit uh, can be uh, fully Dante optimized by, you know, adding a card in. So you can actually bring in, you know, 64 channels of Dante and utilize the full capacity of the 40 channels inside of this thing if you want. You're not just limited to the 16 onboard preamps. Um, but really the beauty of, of mixing on this console is doing it via uh, the extremely well updated and maintained St uh, TF Stage Mix app. So, um, you know, in this day and age, uh, iPad mixing has become uh, really at the forefront of especially some of these smaller applications. Um, we'll probably see a continuation of that. Uh, our TF line does have three other models that have full tactile faders, but man, we've seen um, some great uh, uses of this TF rack where it's like, hey, we just need to hide this. We just want to give someone an iPad to be able to walk around and mix, you know, this small acoustic band on a stage. Awesome. Here's here's the, you know, the great way to do it with all of the full processing at your fingertips of a true digital mixing console. Um, so in terms of getting IO into this guy, you, you heard me mention before the Dante card, but uh, what about a stage box? What if we want to, you know, have this rack mixer living, you know, in an offsite location, but we need to still, you know, get our XLR inputs into this thing somehow. And so this uh, TO1608 unit, you know, is a is a 16 uh, analog uh, combo XLR, XLR preamp um, with eight analog XLR outputs. Uh, it's fully Dante equipped um, and it can operate, you know, at 44.1 or 48 kilohertz uh, to get that audio into, into your uh, in your mixer. Uh, moving to speakers for this application, we're going to take a look at the Nexo speakers. So uh, Nexo's, uh, many people, you know, know Nexo synonymous with some of the higher end point source uh, and line array offerings, which we are going to take a look, look at here. But uh, we also uh, have this small compact point source line known as our ID series or in space definition. And so these speakers are incredibly powerful and incredibly high fidelity at an extremely compact form factor. That ID14 you see there, it's a single four inch uh, coaxial driver. Uh, that box is about 5.1 inches cubed across the board. And yet yeah, uh, you can fit these things uh, in extremely discrete spaces and get uh, amazing high fidelity and output out of them. The ID24 is the bigger brother um, that we're gonna take a look at here. And then we're gonna uh, visit those two subwoofers as well. So the ID24 main speaker, uh, if you recall back to the system drawing, we're using these in an outdoor application to shoot across the big patio, but also in a left-right configuration for a big sports um, playback system. Um, so this uh, brewery especially likes to host uh, events during sporting events and, you know, gets a pretty rowdy crowd in there. So we need to be able to keep up. And what better way to do that than with this uh, two-way dual four-inch speaker that's capable of 126 dB peak. Um, so the ID series is available in touring or installation versions. And essentially what that means, and you'll see here, touring version takes advantage of NL4 connectors on the back and then this grill, this metal grill on the front, while the installation version, which does give you uh, an IP54 weather rating, um, gives you a nice cloth grill on the front and then a captive cable to help, you know, create that waterproofing. Wes. On that one, the uh, you said 126 decibels peak. Is that at full range, or is that a certain uh, uh, frequency? That's at full range. So the the ID24 operates um, down to uh, 120 hertz uh, is its crossover point. It can be crossover at 120 or um, 150 hertz, uh, and and that hundred that higher crossover settings typically utilized in like a front fill scenario. Um, but yeah, going down uh, even lower, full range, yeah, we can hit that 126 dB peak. Yeah, yeah, Brian, if you've not heard this product yet, it's a product that you, it, it messes with your eyeballs, as do a lot of Nexo products, because their whole thing is getting a fidelity, but at a really loud volume out of a tiny, out of tiny drivers. That's always been their thing, and a lot of the, a lot of their R and D and their patents are based around a combination of physics and using the DSP amplifier. Uh, you know, you have to use them with you know the nexo and right. the dsp amplifiers and, and it's a true a true compression driver with that dual four and it, yeah. it gets out there but it, it it is amazing sounding you just you know highly recommend you you know we'll get a pair in and i know you guys just put them in a project so it's great 
Yeah, lo looking forward to hearing it in the project. So, okay. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so companion subwoofer uh, to the ID24 is the IDS110. It's a single 10 inch long excursion driver. There's actually a dual version of this as well where you can have two uh, 10 inch drivers. But uh, for this application, we chose the single 10 and actually wall mounted it uh, directly above the two ID24s. Um, so 43 hertz to 130 hertz, that's pretty good sub bass extension at 125 decibels peak. Uh, so it pairs really well with that ID24. Um, and you can see the sleek low, pro low profile design. This is actually the touring version because it does have uh, NL4 connectors on the back and you see that pull mount on the top right there. So the ID series is really great for portable applications too because you can pull mount right off of this sub, uh, you know, fly that ID14 in a vertical setting, rotate your horn on the back, um, which we didn't uh, take a look at here, but uh, the horns in the back of the ID24s can be rotated just with a single knob that you just press in and turn. So. Uh, extremely, um, extremely friendly speaker for portable applications too. Yes, yeah, we get into displays and immersive audio. Uh, there's all kinds of extra rigging deck to hang these things in a whole bunch of different fashions. If it's a portable system and or a museum display, an exhibit or something that's only installed for uh, a week or two or something like that, um, a lot of flexibility there. For the sake of time, Wes, I know we've got to keep flying because we've got one more larger system example, but I'll let you get back in it. Yeah. And so uh, just some of the other in the ID series that's utilized uh, in that brewery space. So the ID14, that's just a single four inch and then the IDS 108. And these go extremely well together. You actually see the 14 sitting on top of the 108. That's actually rigged to it uh, using an L bracket that you can't see on the back there. So when you want full range, you know, BGM output at extremely high fidelity and actually be able to get up to that 116 dB peak, this was our go to scenario for that. Um, and so like Doug hinted already, you know, Nexo's processing is really where um, some of the magic comes in, right? So all of the NX amplifiers have built in speaker presets for the entire Nexo line. Um, what Nexo really prides itself on doing is, is being able to provide, you know, phase coherency when you're mix and matching any speaker in the Nexo line, any speaker, any sub, you're going to get great uh, or perfect phase coherency between the different speakers in your system. Obviously, you know, timing and calibration is required um, for the actual system. But as far as the speaker presets themselves, um, that's taken care of in the processing. And so lots of features in the amplifiers that we're going to breeze through real, here real quick. Um, just extremely high fidelity. That LSI chip sounds incredible. Um, and you'll see the different wattage offerings too. So one of the nice things, there's only these three NX amplifiers that can power the entire Nexo line. Um, so you see the 1300 watt, 2500 watt, and 4500 watt per channel versions. And so all the way uh, from the um, from the ID series all the way up to the full, you know, line array series, we can do it. Um, and then you can drop in some different network cards, you know, Dante, AES, uh, or just straight up remote control. These amps can take it. Um, so very easy to integrate into a system. And then uh, you can uh, control these amplifiers with the intuitive touch screen, or you can do it uh, via our Nemo system control um, application. So this can be uh, uh, OS driven on a Mac, or actually you can even have full system control on an iPad or an iPhone. Scary. Yeah, right? <laughs> but, it, but you can but, do it uh, on a pinch. Yeah, yeah. You can. And then lastly, to wrap up uh, the brewery system, you know, hey, we did need to throw a 70 volt solution in here, but we've got a whole Dante network. So how do we want to do that? Our XMV series actually are fully Dante capable. Uh, so you can actually, you know, bring into a four channel or eight channel amplifier that's capable of eight ohm output or full 70 volt, 100 volt that we see here. And then uh, Doug stole the show a little bit earlier on talking about the ceiling speakers and some of their features, but here they are, uh, you know, hit a spot on. They There's a ton of intuitive uh, features built into these guys, um, such as the magnetic grill, uh, Brian, that you asked about, and then also those anti-drop tabs. Uh, and so one thing that's synonymous through all of this is just sound quality, right? These these ceiling speakers, in my opinion, and uh, you know, say this with my Yamaha shirt on or not, I think sound absolutely incredible for you know compared to what else is available on the market. Um, so as you see, I'm speeding up here just because I want to honor everybody's time today. I want to make sure you know we have time for question at the end. So. Now we're stepping into one of the larger systems, you know, Performing Arts Center. And what I want to keep in mind here too is, you know, Performing Arts Center could be, hey, we're bringing a tour in. We need to keep this all portable. Or, hey, this is actually going to be an installation that needs to be dressed up really nice. 
uh, for these performances. And that's how we're going to keep the system. So taking a look at, you know, a couple different performing arts centers that I've gotten the pleasure to design uh, in the recent years here, um, you know, and, and we're going to be looking at the Nexo offering uh, pretty exclusively for the speakers here, just because we want that premium level uh, of sound. And so uh, these are just some screen grabs from the Nexo NS1 software, which like Doug mentioned is available, you know, uh, to, to anyone who wants to program with it. But also this is a big part of what I do on the day-to-day -day as far as designing systems. So now we're starting to look at a really large scale system, you know, taking a full line left, right line array system that's being uh, controlled by a, a, a digital mixer in front of house, uh, feeding some Dante powered loudspeakers um, that's maybe bringing out audio to a distributed system out into a lobby or an atrium. Um, you know, all this starts to get compassed together. So uh, you can kind of see some continuity here. We talked about the network switches. We've talked about the, the different wireless control options, the DSPs, the 70 volt amplifiers. There's the commercial install series speakers all paired together. And so you'll see too uh, a couple different, you know, net, uh, enterprise networking solutions of how to manage all this too. Um, so in choosing a console for an environment like this, you know, Yamaha's console lineup is uh, really one of the trademarks, uh, you know, on who we are and the quality uh, that we've built our name on in the pro audio world over the years. And so there's many vast options. Some of you may be familiar with our newest Revage lineup that just got, uh, that is still very new. Uh, the Revage PM10 was released back in 2016. And now we just even in 2020, we're able to release two new DSPs and two new surfaces to even uh, even more greatly uh, increase the entry point into the highest of our console line. Um, so you can kind of see some of the components here uh, with five control surfaces to choose from, three DSPs, and then several different IO combinations to make it work. So just breathing through, breezing through a couple of these images, you could really see um, how high tech and beautiful these mixing surfaces are. Um, the R&D that has gone into the entire Ravage lineup is, is state of the art. Um, the ergonomics of mixing on one of these consoles, you see our PM5 here with the three capacitive touchscreens. Uh, and that nice tilt up is that you can reach uh, any part of this surface from standing in one spot. You can even plant your elbows on that rest and still reach the full top of the touchscreen uh, for mixing. So ergonomics are important when mixing, right? But so is sound quality. And so Yamaha really stepped it up. Um, you know, with this Ravage line um, by taking not only the IO capabilities that you see here in the different DSP engines, but also uh, in what our IO boxes are capable of doing. So the RPIO um, is going to be where the new uh, hybrid microphone preamps in the Ravage line uh, are stored uh, and, and tapped into uh, from a network standpoint. And uh, you've probably heard the name Rupert Neve uh, thrown out with Yamaha. Uh, throughout the years. And so one of our greatest technological partnerships with Rupert Neve came in the design of our hybrid microphone preamp that emulates his transformer emulation and silk processing that he, Rupert Neve himself, before he tragically passed away this year, was able to sign off on and say, you guys did it. You brought this into the digital world. And so that's one of the, the big uh, hallmarks that Ravage has built on is taking the sonic character of Yamaha's transparency over the years now adding some incredible uh, coloration and just depth of field mixing capabilities to it. Um, so as you can see in the Ravage lineup, we've got consoles that can meet just about every need um, in terms of size. And one thing to remember is you can mix and match all of the surfaces and DSPs and IO combinations to create the ultimate Ravage system for you. Um, but Yamaha is still in our me uh, medium, you know, format console lineup. Uh, we still uh, are supporting and updating the CL and the QL line that you see here. Our Rio stage boxes, uh, which are fully uh, Dante native and 96K capable, uh, got an update just two and a half years ago with a brand new preamplifier inside of it. Uh, these stage boxes are, are utilized uh, across our entire console lineup, uh, whether it's a TF mixer, QL, CL, or even the Ravage itself and utilizing the full Dante networking capability. Um, so the QL is kind of the little brother to the CL. And so um, I wanted to I wanted to point these out because it's like, okay, how do we select a console for a, a system like this Performing Arts Center? Or, hey, if this was an outdoor concert event, you know, what, what would we lo we'd be looking for in a console? And so um, kind of right in the middle of the road, we've got our CL5. 
Um, so you could see here, it's got, you know, 30, 36 fader, I'm sorry, 38 faders on board, uh, with the, um, 72 mono channels, eight stereo channels. It's fully Dante native, um, with plenty of IO slots to expand as well. And we mentioned the IO a little bit already in this system. So, um, being able to have remote IO is extremely important, whether in a portable or an installation scenario, because, Rather than running all these copper analog snakes all over the facility, you're now able to do it with a single Cat 5e cable or a dual two Cat 5e cables if you want full redundancy uh, with these stage boxes. So you could place these stage boxes, stage left, stage right, in a video suite, in a broadcast truck if necessary, and bring a full network together as we saw in that drawing. Hey, Wes, I want to throw something out really quick on this. I know you already mentioned the Rios can run at 96K. QL and CL, obviously, the consoles were designed at 48K. I mean, we looked, we've been making 96K consoles since 2002, 2003. But when we did all the R&D, I mean, 95% of the users are using them at 48K. And so there's a lot of folks that keep, just keep playing at 96K. And, and it's great if you can do it and you're, your system is, is capable of putting it out, your PA system, go for a 96K console and, and, and we can do that. You can use Rios and you can get into a PM3 in the Ravage family and get the best of both worlds. But yeah. but really 48K is still predominantly where 90%, 95% of the production world lives and, and it's where the broadcast world lives. Broadcast is 48K. So I don't want people to get too bogged down in, in, the, in the specs sometimes when they're looking right. at this stuff. So yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and then lastly, on the consoles, you know, there's some some great third party control that's integrated in these, uh, hopefully soon coming to the Ravage lineup as well. Uh, and being able to control different remote mic preamps outside of the Rio line, but also uh, the big one is those wireless microphone receivers. So that's huge, whether it's in a house of worship installation environment, corporate uh, event based where you've got a ton of wireless microphones, being able to manage those within the console is a pretty powerful tool. Um, so uh, trying to pick up the pace here, but moving into the loudspeakers um, for this application. So this is where we're going to focus on the full Nexo line. And I, I love this image because uh, it's actually missing Nexo's newest uh, P plus lineup. So there's actually four more point source speakers that should be going uh, right here. And we'll talk a little bit about those here. But uh, you could see Nexo can scale up, you know, from that's the dual four inch uh, ID24 that we talked about already all the way through our GOM line arrays and all the way up to our STM uh, line arrays that support the biggest stadiums and arenas that you might need to provide sound reinforcement for. Um, so in this application for a performing arts center such as this, or a venue of about you know, 800 to 1500 people, um, our GOM 10 fits that you know, middle of the road lineup perfectly. And the GOM series has a lot of incredible uh, patented technologies inside of it. But uh, as far as some of the meat here we're looking at, it's a 10 inch uh, single base mid driver with a 1.4 inch uh, throat driver uh, using Nexos uh, hyperbolic waveguide. Um, it comes in a couple different vertical dispersion patterns and you can actually variable control the horizontal dispersion patterns. And so being able to create an array, whether you're flying the subwoofers in the line array or out, uh, you can do that here with, with Nexo's really intuitive rigging. So in this application, we actually looked at flying the M sub 15 in the arrays left and right, um, just to help sight lines, right, that we want to preserve in a theater. Um, so flying this M sub 15, you know, we get 136 dB SP out of the guy out of a single 15 inch um, band pass design subwoofer. And you can see that operating range down to 40 Hertz. Um, so in a theater environment, you know, we may not hitting be hitting infra level sub, which Nexo does have subs that can, um, but we're we're getting that punch that we're going to need to still get the full range uh, of audio output here. So looking at some of Nexo's patent te technologies, because this, this, I really want, you know, to, to highlight, you know, all of the all the R&D that's gone into this, not just for the sake of 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 saying we engineered something, but really what Nexo has done over the years with all of the products they've been building on for the last 40 years is they take the technology that they developed what they learned from it and then they build on it. And so it's not like you get left field over here and right field over here with all these different designs. You'll actually see many of the Nexo technologies start to utilize some of these patents that we're gonna take a look at that, that really sets it apart uh, in the industry. Um, so being able to you know, address in the line array world of things, you know, how do we help these cabinets couple uh, without interference? And so introduce the hyperbolic uh, reflector waveguide, which again, this um, does does some some cool science there that that I'm not going to uh, spend too much time reading just for sake of time. 
but it allows that coupling without interference up to 20 kilohertz when you're starting to stack, you know, whether it's three or 12 line array elements together. Helping that in the min band uh, to reduce distortion is Nexo's patented phase directivity device. It's this little yellow bow tie guy you see here. And so what that does is if you're familiar with the physics of line array design is when you're coupling all these drivers together that are stacked on top of each other, um, this actually what it does is it halves the distance between the coupled devices, which lets you raise the crossover point and let these drivers operate at a more optimal uh, frequency range. And then we talked about already being able to variably control the horizontal pattern. So the ability to order the box comes standard as uh, an 80 degree horizontal output. You can add this uh, $60 flange um, to be able to make it a full 120 degrees wide. And so this can be used in the entire array. It can be used in just the bottom one or two boxes to help get that downfill uh, area spread out a little better. And then Nexo uh, uses this patented port technology uh, that helps absorb some of those higher order harmonics that again is just going to be detrimental to on axis frequency responses. So we really wanted to you know, smooth that out as much as possible. Yep, that's one of the ways we do it here. The GOM series uh, is comprised of lightweight polyurethane cabinets, um, which again, incredibly rigid and strong uh, and being light and weight. So it's reducing some sympathetic vibrations inside of there, but also in the touring world helps you be able to uh, fly a lot more of these boxes with a lot less structural requirements, which is a big deal at the end of the day. Um, so I didn't put any notes on the rigging in here. Uh, the rigging system in the GOM and the STM system is pretty incredible. Um, all of Nexo's uh, cabinets, and you'll notice in our NS1 software, is fully TUV Nord certified. Um, that might be something you're familiar with. If not, it's essentially uh, OSHA on steroids in Europe for anything that gets flown in the air. Uh, so Nexo takes that very seriously. And then we talked a little bit about the NX amps already, but you can kind of see some of the power capabilities here, uh, even with the GOM line array especially. Um, so being able to power, you know, up to 16 GOM10 cabinets on an NXAMP 4x2, that's pretty incredible. Um, you can increase the density if you want, if you want more power out of single cabinets or just a little more control when you're tuning and calibrating the system. But in terms of being able to put together a turnkey portable line array uh, with a couple amplifiers, this is the way to go for sure. Um, and then moving up in network switch capabilities in a larger system like this, you know, we saw that the smaller 10 port POE, you know, here's kind of the next step up in a large enterprise system like this. Uh, so a couple different offerings there um, with a couple different, you know, fiber speeds as well, single gig, 10 gig, you name it, it can all be linked together to handle a vast amount of Dante network traffic across some of these really large facilities. So being able to monitor some of those, uh, Yamaha has some tools uh, to do such. So uh, the LAN monitor software is proprietary to the Yamaha switches and being able to see every device that's on the, the Dante network uh, and, and see some network stats that are coming back from that. And then in the vein of also the, you know, the portable side of this system, but also the installation side, um, I, I wanted to hint real quick on a couple different either stage monitor options or um, some portable mains options. So our DZR line, which was actually co-developed uh, with uh, Nexo uh, in the last couple of years, is a powered uh, speaker line that actually has Dante uh, connectivity natively right on the box. Uh, it's the industry standard, industry's first offering to offer Dante native on a powered loudspeaker. And you'll see here in the line um, some pretty impressive offerings as far as you know being able to use these in a trap stage monitor scenario, or if you wanted to fly them mount them on a pole on a sub, depending on what kind of portable application you're using, these speakers can fit the bill incredibly. So you see, we've got several two-way boxes and then a three-way uh, with LF drivers from 10 inch up to 15 inch um, with some rotatable uh, coverage angles inside of those guys too. So those, those, all, have, of, those all have rigging uh, built in. They're also available black and white and with and without Dante, so. Correct, with and without Dante. And then there's actually even a passive version of the same speaker technology uh, called the CZR, which then can utilize Yamaha amplifiers with built-in presets to get that same DSP and FIRX technology. Yep. Um, so companion subwoofers, same deal, Dante and non-Dante versions, 15-inch and 18-inch uh, version, great maximum SPL, 
on utilizing that base reflex design with a port uh, and a large voice coil. So I always love showing this slide because it kind of shows uh, the DZR in action, whether you're using it um, in a full Dante system or you want to uh, use it in both Dante and analog combined. Uh, you can kind of even see here these sure uh, PSM um, monitors that are grabbing an analog signal off the Dante network that's, you know, essentially using the Dante out port on the back of this subwoofer to feed an analog signal to some in-ear monitors. So um, pretty incredible technology built into uh, the DZRs here. And so I sped up through the end there. I know um, we're, we're getting here uh, on time. So that was the end of the, the systems part. Um, you know, stepping up and, and looking at that full scale performing arts center system. But um, I know we breezed through a lot of that technology really quick. And, and, and please understand that um, we barely scratched the surface on some of that stuff this morning. But hopefully those four examples gave, uh, you know, kind of a window into what some of the capabilities are when you're designing a system uh, with Yamaha and Nexo partnered together. Um, incredible capabilities from the input side all the way to the speaker side. Uh, and, and as Dobel can attest, um, there's a lot of uh, depth to each of those lines too, where we can meet just about any need uh, that gets grown out there. So I haven't seen any more questions come up in the chat, but I'll turn it back over to you, uh, Brian, or, or if anyone wants to put any questions in here uh, as I wrap up our end of the presentation. Yeah, you can. Well, yeah I, I appreciate it, West Doug. I, I was gonna say, that somewhere maybe in the future lee and i already spoke too because you have so much information maybe we'll have you guys back and we can kind of do a continuance you know and go a little bit more in depth with some of the other products um i did have one other question uh as you were passing through some of the, the speakers there, there seems to be in a lot of situations you have like a, even on the um the id one fours and then the id two is it two one four or two four i can't remember two four um, they're one to one on all the time from the from like the full range to the sub, or is that something that depends on the spec of what you're looking at? Even you could go one sub and two tops, or you know, however you're looking at. It. Like, what does that? How do you figure that in? Oh yeah, well, it, it, it's all about you know how much low end do you want in the system? You know, like the banquet hall, for example, in that brewery didn't have any subs um, built in installed. Now uh, they wanted to be able to bring in portably subs on a case by case basis, depending on what kind of event they were having. Cause if it was just a banquet, um, they're like, Hey, we're good with no subs. But if they were going to actually have, you know, a small jazz trio in the corner, they're like, yeah, we're going to wheel in one of our subs, plug it into the wall and, and go to town. So, um, to answer your question, Brian, uh, that's where using the NS one design software, you know, whether you're just looking at a, at a square, you know, outdoor event or, uh, maybe it is a full install where we utilize, you know, grabbing a CAD file and drawing the venue fully to figure out, okay, what level of subwoofer support do we want, you know, in, in these different spaces? Um, so that's where the modeling software really comes comes in handy. Um, but yeah, you can you can modularly design and create those systems, you know, to to really match whatever the vision and and hope for that system is. Okay. Yeah, and and I want to just uh, you know recap. We we all everything that we saw in there is available, you know, shy of a microphone system or wireless mics. And even then, and we didn't get into detail here, we kind of skirted around it, but between Sure, Sennheiser, Audio-Technica, and I believe Audix now, we have we have working relationships with all four of those microphone companies to have presets that were work that our R&D team here in the US and in Europe, coupled with the Sennheiser, Sure, Audio-Technica, and Audix com companies all came up with presets for like the TF series and that to use in the libraries and everything. So we wanted to throw that in as well, that that it a, a lot of thought went into how all these systems glue together, not just internally Yamaha Nexo, but also working with some of our major, you know, some of the major microphone companies or the major microphone companies. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys for having us uh, to, today. We certainly appreciate the opportunity and working with Doble Labs and and uh, and for those of you that tuned in, we really, really appreciate you guys. And and uh, we could follow back up with some questions if they come in after the fact. Absolutely. Doug, Wes, thank you for your time. And um, and hopefully we'll have you guys back soon. And I know that uh, we'll be working together soon. I'm, I'm looking forward to the project that I have going. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, thanks. Thanks, everybody. Yep, thanks. Thanks, everybody, again. And we'll see you next time.